Welcome. Welcome to the Maximum Mom podcast. I am so excited today. Well, first I should acknowledge today is the beginning of the Maximum Law Conference. So many, many Maximum Law attorneys are there at the conference today. So they might not be able to watch this live, but um, I am so excited today to invite Shivani Ray. And wow, is about all I have to say initially. I mean, <laughs> you just kind of amaze me. I mean, Shivani is a 21 year old and no, she doesn't have children. So obviously that's a little out of our normal guest, but I really, really was eager to bring Shivani on to help us understand, I mean, what she's done and what her passion and current work is around really, really helping children understand finances and be able to come into their own with their gifts. So first, just welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And what an introduction. I feel, I feel, so, I feel so wonderful right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am just so thrilled to have you. I cannot, I mean, I'm fascinated by what you do. I mean, usually <laughs> when I bring somebody on this podcast, I always like, you know, because of the title, Maximum Mom, it's mostly mom. So I always want to know about people's yeah. families. And while I absolutely want to know about your family, I mean, because you're 21, you're kind of in that, you know, little bit of a different age zone where, you know, it's not like you're probably yeah. spending all the time with your biological family, but I really want to understand. And I want to get to a bigger question with you is about finding kids superpower and how mm. has your life kind of made you interested in doing this work that you do? That's a great question. So I think that uh, when it comes to finding kids superpowers, it's all about giving them the space and time and opportunities to find their superpower, whatever that is. Um, allowing them to ask questions, do things, try things, fail at things, make mistakes, and all of that in between. Because without that, uh, you know, sometimes it's really easy to get stuck in, you know, just growing up and doing what everybody else is doing. And so by giving kids uh, and teens um, an opportunity to try different things, to see what they like, to find what excites them uh, will be the first, the first thing that you can do, uh, I think, as a, as a parent and as a family uh, together that will help them move towards whatever it is that superpower is. Oh my gosh, I cannot agree with you more. I mean, just the fact that you have this wisdom at 21, I find pretty extraordinary. <laughs> Thank I you. just think you're kind of kicking it out of the park already. <laughs> and um, it oh, is thank you. so true though, the space needed for people. And I think even adults, I think sometimes we adults need to give ourselves mm. space to find our own superpowers because we get yes. caught up in that, typical path. I mean, kind of like you and I talked about at the beginning of the show, going to school, going to college, going to law school. I mean, we don't really find our superpower in any of that. We're simply checking boxes and, mm -hmm. you know, going through taking exams and really you need the space to find that. And I, I would encourage all parents who are listening. I mean, that is probably some of the best advice you're going to get all year is to give your <laughs> space to find their superpower. Yeah. It, well, and it's interesting. I have to say, I recently saw a post from a friend of mine who also is an attorney. She doesn't practice law now though, whose child mm -hmm. went from, you know, way into one activity. She'd been kind of, you know, killing it in this mm -hmm. one activity, but really wanted to try something else and something that she's mm -hmm. not supernaturally great at. And the parents though were like, great, more power to you, you know, like, Let's mm -hmm. bring on this new activity. And I thought how so refreshing that is because I think so many parents have a hard time letting their children walk away from something that yeah. they're quote unquote good at to mm -hmm. try something else. And I mean, why not? You know? I, I, I think I think a great uh, understanding behind this is, and this is something similar to what we talk about with finances, is that there's a very different mindset around, for example, just letting go of something and trying something new uh, or, you know, with money matters is uh, we find that parents come from a much more place of wanting their kids and teens to be um, 
you know, safe, have a financially stable platform for themselves um, and, and growing and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and kids, they, they want the lifestyle. They want um, to, you know, try new things, to explore a little bit more. And there's a different mindset when it comes to parents and kids. And it's about finding that balance and that middle ground between the communication between parents and kids, even with something like like a career change or something that they're interested in and allowing them to make that switch. And yes, it can feel scary <laughs> because you're like, well, well, you're, you're good at that. Why, why are you changing? Um, right. Continue that path. But if you allow that space and time, it, it can firstly, not only be, you know, way better potentially, um, but at least they'll, they'll do it and they'll know if it was right or not. Exactly. And that's something super powerful. Oh yeah, to not have regret. I mean, that's a huge thing. Well, tell us, tell us about your your passion in the whole um, financial program that you work with and the teaching you do to children and youth on financial freedom. Sure, yeah. So uh, I'm the global face and community champion of financial freedom. Uh, we like to bring the fun into finances because frankly, uh, too many people have a negative, heavy stigma around money matters and finances. And we want to make sure that our you know, future kids, teens, um, they don't have that and they can thrive not only in life, but financially as well. And frankly, we're all going to deal with money matters at some point in time and might as well start sooner than later because, Absolutely. yeah, because I mean, I feel most people when money matters come up, it comes up when they, when it has to come up and they're not really prepared for it. They get thrown into the deep end. Uh, and so we want to prepare your kids and teens to make sure that they already have the foundations in place and good money habits and good mental habits and mindsets around not only money matters, but just different areas of life so that they can thrive versus feel like they've been thrown into the deep end. Uh, so we have kids content and we have teen content. So I handle all the teen content. I deliver it very, um, in a, in a fun, very easy bite sized understandable way. And then all the kids content is all animated. So we want to really make it simple, fun, and easy to understand. What a powerful resource for parents to be able to help their children. I really am so blown away by it. I mean, I actually went on and spent some time looking at the, um, it was you <clears throat> talking about, I can't remember the last word, but it was like the Jedi program, the four mm. kind of pillars mm -hmm. of um, the Jedi program. And I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but I was like, oh my gosh, this is so approachable. Mm. And I mean, what an important thing. I mean, what drives you? Like, where did this passion come from where you, I mean, this is what you were doing and what you were really passionate about. So for me, uh, like we spoke about a little bit earlier, is I've always been uh, in a very unconventional schooling um, area of life. Like I've, I've had, uh, I've been in traditional school for 10 years, like growing up, you know, and then after that homeschooling. And during that time, I got to learn about all sorts of different things that maybe weren't in the traditional system. And right. so one of the biggest passions of mine is filling in those gaps in the schooling system. For example, uh, you know, mental health is a mm -hmm. gap, uh, which yeah. is starting to be more filled, which I love to see that the, there's far more awareness around that happening now. Um, uh, money matters is the, another gap. Mm -hmm. um, sex education is another gap. Yeah. And seeing these gaps in the system, it, it makes me really happy that I get to be part of a, a company and a, and a program that we get to fill one of those gaps. Um, and we talk about, you know, mindfulness and meditation and habit building and all these other aspects of life that kind of uh, help build up uh, the rest of the content that we teach, which is all finances. So we start by teaching finances, but really what we're teaching is just how can you live an abundant life and, and thrive in all areas of life. And that brings me a lot of happiness because I know how much value I got from being taught about things that weren't necessarily in the traditional system. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't change 
anything because it's brought me so much more awareness, so much self-confidence uh, and just a lot more in life than just the stuff that we get taught in traditional uh, schooling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Well, just listening to you, I mean, to think of the three gaps that you named, and obviously we probably could come up with more, but we'll spare ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just those three, think about it. Mental health, financial management, and sex education. I mean, hello. Those yeah, are kind of those are. <laughs> yeah, those are three areas of life that I would say are, are, you're, sort of you're going to deal with at <laughs> some point in time, it's going to happen. And yet, um, oh my. for some reason, we, we don't set our kids up for, um, success in those areas, at least not most of the time. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I find it fascinating how truly powerful it is, but what voids we have. And as parents, we have to understand that those voids are there and that it is, you know, the idea that parents think, oh, well, we'll just let the school teach that. I mean, no, that is not the way to go with this. I mean, you must focus on mental health, financial matters, and sex education. Yeah. I mean, I mean, exactly one of the one of the statistics that just throws me so off guard every time I hear it is that more than one in three adults in the U.S. have less than a thousand dollars saved I mean that's it's insane. it's insane it is insane I mean and the, the right reason behind that for a thousand dollars and I mean like exactly like you look at that statistic and you think, okay, where's the breakdown? And the breakdown is, is, is frankly, be, because we're not teaching this in school. And unfortunately, most of the time, we're not teaching this at home either. Right. Right. And, and it's, I understand that money matters can be a sore, touchy, heavy subject. And that's why we want to change that and, and bring about a new, uh, mindfulness around money matters in a much more positive, healthy way with kids, starting with kids. Because if we can break that cycle and that loop, which starts with parents and their kids, then that's going to change generationally. Like, and oh. going forward, we'll probably Absolutely. all be in a much more uh, positive, thriving space when it comes to money matters and other matters of life. But Absolutely. it starts with making sure that these conversations are had every one of the biggest things I say on different interviews and different conversations, the best thing you can do for your family is to just start talking about money mm -hmm. because just talking about money, unfortunately is a taboo, let alone doing anything with it. Just having right. the conversations around money is something that's missing. And I found that the people who have open conversations around money, that even just simple stuff like playing a guessing game at a grocery store and asking your kids, you know, depending how old they are, obviously, um, but like, hey, how much do you think our, our grocery bill came up to? Get them starting to think about it at least because at least they'll have those, those conversations and have that understanding of the value of a dollar and all that kind of stuff before they have to deal with money themselves. Uh, or, you know, are in the place where th they have to like learn how to, you know, get, have a job or whatever it is. Um, they're already yeah. successful in their own way before they get to that point. Oh, it just, the, the amount you can do as a parent in helping your child understand about money is really endless. I mean, as a homeschool mm -hmm. mom, I used to take my four kids. I mean, I called them my four ducklings, but uh, mm -hmm. we go to the grocery store and most moms hate going to the grocery store with all their children. And I kind of loved it because I'd have these lists, I'd cut them all up into quadrants and I'd be like, okay, you two kids go here. I always mm -hmm. put like, oldest kid with the youngest and then the two middle together and I'd send them off on their little journeys and they would get their list and I would put a little budget on it you know and mm -hmm. kind of help them figure out like how much you could buy to stay in your budget I mean it sounds all silly and kind of elementary but I mean my children truly understood the value of a dollar yeah. and could manage their money I mean when they were in middle school you exactly. know really understood 
And that makes a real difference. And I also think employment. I mean, I'm a huge fan of having children earn money very mm -hmm. early. Um, I mean, our children all started earning money. I mean, my oldest started earning money, I would say, when she was about nine, maybe eight, mm -hmm. um, you know, oh, babysitting, cool, yeah. And, yeah, doing other things. But I mean, they all had jobs by the time they were in middle school, for sure, whether it's, I mean, you know, shoveling snow or. Yeah, actually, that's, that's, that's one of the things that we talk about. So uh, our program, we follow what we call the LEAP method. Mm -hmm. So L is for learn, E is for earn, A is for accelerate, and P is for play. And so in learn, we teach one thing about money. So whether it's the difference between a credit card or debit card or um, how the bank system works or, you know, anything like that. Uh, in earn, we teach in one way or, you know, give them ideas around how they can actually earn money. So we have online methods and offline methods. And that's one of the biggest things that we encourage kids to do is to st either start a business, start doing, finding a way to earn money, whether it's starting a t-shirt company or, um, you know, creating social media graphics on Canva or yeah. even shoveling snow or babysitting, you know, the traditional like car washes, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in Accelerate, we teach, okay, now that you've started to earn money, you're, you have money coming in, how can you uh, save it and how can you invest it in the right ways? And then in Play, we cover things like healthy habits, goal setting, um, mindfulness. So basically all the, the add-ons that help with everything else that we've talked about. So the fact that you brought up uh, that you, your kids started doing that. I, I love it because I fully stand by it. Both me and my sister have done the same, whether it's tutoring or babysitting. My sister started babysitting to, she wanted to plan a trip to the UK, which is where my family is originally from. And we, she, she was like, okay, I want to plan this trip. And she wanted to pay for it herself. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, how can I do this? So she started babysitting and doing all this uh, work to fulfill that specific goal. And one thing that I found is that when kids start to earn money, regardless of whether it's for a specific goal, like traveling or a, a, you know, a new you know, branded hoodie or whatever it is, is that they'll start to earn, uh, they'll start to understand more healthy money habits automatically. Yep. Oh, which is a very I mean, different mindset between parents and kids, right? Because uh, like kids will want to want to work towards a specific thing, whether it's, a, as I said, branded hoodie, a travel, you know, going to the movies, whatever that looks like. It's probably something that you're like, oh, okay, well, they're just going to go, you know, spend that money on something. But what, what we found is that when they start doing that, they're, they're building the saving habits they're starting mm -hmm. to understand the value of a dollar. They're starting to ask better questions and in, 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 in terms of where they value, what they value more. Um, and then that translates into, you know, in their future, how they handle money as well. So if you can like relate to your kids, I found that parents often are like, okay, well, you got to start saving now so that you can, you know, just have a safety net or an emergency fund or whatever that looks like. It's a very different mindset. Oh, and yeah. so if you, again, like finding that middle ground is so powerful because regardless of how they're earning money and spending it, they're starting to make those healthier habits young. Yes, indeed. Well, and one thing I found having children who always worked, I mean, since they were young and that just being kind of an expectation that they had to do that when they got to college and, you know, that typical kind of mm -hmm. college student who's, you know, maybe not trying very hard or maybe you know, not mm -hmm. like putting forth their best effort. I mean, having those conversations with a child who does understand the value of a dollar and who has earned mm -hmm. money. I found to be way different and way more powerful. I mean, I've had children like say to me, mm, I'm not really working as hard as I should. I wouldn't be paying for my college if I was you. And I'm like, fair enough. I agree. <laughs> like, I'm not going to either, you know, and being able to talk about it and have it be something that they understand that work equals, you know, the money on the other side, they can actually yeah. value your time in a different way, 
which I mm. found really helpful because you know, it just, I don't know, it just, it's so much more real to me. If you can have these mm -hmm. conversations like you talk about and be able to take away the stigma of the topic and be able to yeah. really say like, you know, I mean, if you're in college right now, let's say I have an 18, 19 year old who's not really putting forth their best effort. I mean, it really might not be the time for them to go to college. Like maybe they need another year under their belt, just working, doing whatever. Like maybe they don't want to sit mm -hmm. in class. Again, maybe college isn't for them. Do you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. different things, but for me to just kind of throw money at it and be like, oh, well, that's what everyone does. You go to college. So I'm just going to throw this money at you. I mean, no, I, I mean, I have a very strong belief system that, you know, we all work hard for what we earn and, you know, I shouldn't give it away any more than I should expect anybody else to give it away if, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the right thing. And so I think having those conversations is powerful. Yeah, totally agree. Really I, I find that the, the more conversations around money matters with, between parents and kids and even, you know, other conversations around like mindfulness and mental health and sex education and all that kind of stuff. Right. It, it opens doors and allows more openness uh, between not only the family, but awareness of, you know, going into the future and what their lives are going to look like and, and just have a better understanding of, you know, life in general. And well, so, I, I find that kids that are that have been exposed to these kind of conversations are far more self-confident, far more understanding and open, far more aware of their 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 feelings and emotions and and the stuff that's coming up for them are that they're the kind of people that will find their superpower earlier because yep. they're they're asking those better questions, not only to themselves, but they're exposing themselves to uh, various different things that they're going to experience in life growing up. So it's a very powerful thing, just, just even having those conversations. Absolutely. Well, I have to know, like, I mean, you obviously have an extremely expansive growth mindset where, I mean, you obviously have read a lot or been exposed to just mindset work. I mean, for a 21 year old, mm -hmm. I mean, that in and of itself is so powerful, I think. I mean, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about, I mean, where did your mindset work come from? I mean, how do you use your, your attitudes and your work around a growth mindset to really inspire other people towards success? Mm. Okay, yeah. So I was really fortunate that growing up, uh, I was always exposed to various different things. Uh, mm -hmm. One of which is uh, something that my parents called tribe wise parenting. Um, and it's essentially the having a community raise mm -hmm. kids versus just your parents and right. that's it. Uh, so whenever I had a question about something specific that maybe my parents weren't experts in, uh, mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, well ask your, we call everybody, uh, in our family, like family, friends, like uncles, aunts. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're like, well, ask, ask your uncle this, or ask your aunt this, or, uh, have the conversation with this person. And it wasn't just the parent was the okay. only head figure. And so that really allowed me to have a very open mindset, uh, around, you know, various different industries, careers, let alone just people in general. Uh, so that's something that I loved growing up because I was able to, I, it's almost like having multiple parents like, really? <laughs> that you can yeah. go to. Uh, so that's one. It's like having a and board then, of directors. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the other area is I was always um, in this, in two specific spaces growing up. One, very much so in the personal development um, mm -hmm. side of, of, of the world. And so in terms of like, you know, self-growth and all that, I, I can't remember a time I wasn't <laughs> in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I grew up in training rooms, grew up learning about this stuff from the start. And then the other side is I got to learn um, about, you know, giving back to society and serving others. And that was something that really opened me up as well. So uh, wow. those pieces put together is kind of uh, the product of which I am today. 
it's really, I mean, it's just so powerful to talk to you. And I mean, I have to remind myself like every two and a half minutes, you're 21. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it you. is so powerful. And I mean, and I know you and I could talk for hours about, you know, the voids in the education system and in school. Yeah. And I think you are such an example of somebody who has, I mean, thrived without all the traditional, you know, typical education mm -hmm. route that so many children take and been able to come into your own confidently into what matters to you and what gifts you bring to the world. And obviously, I mean, you are 21. God knows what you're going to do for <laughs> how many years. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, who knows what you'll decide to do and change into and transition to. And I mean, the, the whole, your whole life is ahead of you. And exactly. <laughs> just, it's really powerful. I mean, just to, to talk to somebody in with your age and what just your mindset is really remarkable. I mean, I just would encourage people to really sit back and ask, like, how are you allowing your children to come into this level of confidence at this age? Because it's just really powerful. I mean, and our brains just form such connections. And I think we often kind of shut those off with you know, mm -hmm. traditional school by not really allowing people to go deep into areas. Like when you talk about deeply being surrounded by this tribe wise parenting and really having access to other adults and other mentors and other experts. I mean, that is powerful yeah. for a child. Yeah, very much so. And I, and I, and I think you, you, you hit it right on the head. Like it's, it's, it's just allowing, uh, I think for me and what I've seen, even with, you know, up kids as part, part of our program, it's the fact that they're being exposed and they're being given the resources to blossom into what they could be. And when they're given the opportunity, kids will thrive. Yeah. But it's, a, it's about giving them the space, as we talked about, the space and opportunity to step into that. Well, and I think too, and it's something, I mean, as a parent, I'll be honest, I've struggled with this. <laughs> also, your kids will, um, they'll often do kind of what you expect of them. And I think as a parent, your mindset in parenting comes into play a lot. Like mm -hmm. if you are expecting your child to mess up or to, you know, fail at something or to act irresponsibly or whatever, they're mm. probably going to do that. And whereas if you are expecting your child to, you know, step up to the next level and do the right thing and um, kind of be their best selves, they do that too. I mean, I find that yes. really helping your child expand their mindset is probably one of the greatest things you can do in this role, you know, as a parent and mentor, I mean, mm -hmm. because it's amazing what they can accomplish if we just step out of their yeah. way. Yeah, we've, we've had kids uh, come into the program and earn like $13,000 in two days. Yeah. Yeah. And that's only because like crazy, right? Like amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And it's only because that they, they, they've their parents and the people around them gave, gave them the resources, gave them the the awareness that they can firstly do that, but also just allow them to to do it for themselves. And completely. And we have we have kids inside the program who are saving up for a Lamborghini, and <laughs> like Absolutely. doing all yeah. sorts of all sorts of things like that from like a finance point of view. But what what's behind that? is parents allowing their kids and giving them the space and believing that, hey, you can totally be financially smart. You can do whatever career you want to do. Um, you know, just giving them that, hey, I got you. Let's, let's, let yep. me give you the resources to see what you can do. Completely. Yeah. I mean, I, literally one of my children went to college with, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but well over $20,000 saved from um, being a nanny. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And she had worked so hard and done so many things. And what she was able to do with that money while she was in school and the opportunity she was able to take to travel around the world. I mean, like many times over, she went so many places. I, I couldn't have provided that to her. You know, I was had other kids I was supporting and sending to school. And she took it upon herself to earn and save. And I mean, it's it is revolutionized mm -hmm. her life, you know. That's to right. have that financial freedom at such a young age. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it is pretty powerful for sure. Well, one yeah. thing I wanted to ask you about is when you think of, you know, kind of like your own sense of direction. And I want to say, um, I think I read this that you wrote and you talked about, you know, having um, joy, you know, that you're a, unconventional human living on planet earth who loves to travel, eat good food and live a joyous life. And I, have, <laughs> I, I resonated with that, like more than I care to admit. I mean, especially <laughs> the good food and joyous part. I was like, girl, I am with you on this. <laughs> so, yes. I, I'm a big foodie. I love food. <laughs> absolutely. So tell me, I mean, what is joy to you when you talk about living a joyous life? I mean, I think that's like our greatest, highest calling is living a joyous mm -hmm. life. I mean, what does that look like to you? That's a very interesting question. You know, I've never been asked that question before and I love it. Um, I think living a joyous life is taking the time to appreciate the moments of happiness, how, no matter how big or small, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's creating joy and happiness for yourself, whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. uh, that moves you forward, that brings you, uh, that feeling of, you know, maybe it's connection with the fam with the family, maybe it's traveling and exploring a new place. Maybe it's simply just, you know, reading something that lights you up. It's finding all of those little moments and choosing to focus on that versus sometimes the feelings of, of getting caught up in life and the stresses of things that we all live with. We're all human yeah. at the end of the day, but it's choosing to focus and create those moments. And I think that's what living a joyous life means to me. I love that. And I so agree with you. I mean, I just, I think in every moment we have, I mean, you've got the flip side of the pancake. You can choose joy and gratitude, mm -hmm. or you can choose like anger and resentment and bitterness yeah. or stress. I mean, in almost anything, I mean, mm -hmm. I find that it's like across the board and trying to focus on, for me, like you finding those joyous moments and appreciating them and, and choosing them. And choosing yeah. the joy in them, I think is mm. so valuable. And it's interesting because sometimes I have been called like somebody who's always super positive, almost like a Pollyanna, you know, somebody who's mm. upbeat and happy. And it's interesting because I don't think of myself in that regard. I mean, I see the negative and I can see both mm. sides of the pancake. Like mm -hmm. I truly can see both sides. I can get my head around it you know, and I really get it, but it's like the part that I choose to take on in myself is, I mean, nine times out of 10, it's going to be the joyous one because why not? Like, yeah, know, I mean, why not? It, it's so, it's so simple to understand. And yet I think a lot of people, uh, get caught in the, the negative dramatic sides of life. And yes, by all means, it life has those moments <laughs> I think we can all we can no matter what age um especially in today's day and age where mental health yeah. and and you know there's the staggering numbers of depression anxiety and so on mm -hmm. uh we're all we all feel that there's those sides of life but it's choosing to acknowledge those sides accept them and choose to move on and choose to to take on a more positive um, outlook in a, in a healthy way, because there's a difference between uh, choosing positivity and like ignoring everything else really? um, and, totally. and, 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 and just kind of brushing things under the carpet, which is something that 
um, I'm very passionate about because a lot of kids and teens, they, they do that. Um, mm-hmm. They're like, oh, let me just, let me just keep moving. Let me just keep moving forward and keep brushing it under the carpet and it'll be fine. But you got to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge that those, that, that messy part of life is always going to be there mm-hmm. and choose a more positive way to look at something and choose happiness, choose joy, choose peace, choose bliss, whatever that is. Um, at no matter what stage you are in life. And I think parents can resonate a lot with this too. <laughs> totally. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, as a law firm owner, I mean, I talk to my team and no doubt they probably get sick of me and my woo-woo self. But <laughs> I talk to them about, you know, the thought model. And I'm like, you know, we choose our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> so, and our thoughts dictate our feelings and trying mm-hmm. to explain that to people and understanding that when you're faced with a circumstance, whether it's, you know, you have a flight that just went crazy and now Mm -hmm. you can't make it to a conference. I mean, your thoughts around what happened are what's going to dictate your feelings, you know, and if your thoughts are- And and how you choose to react to those thoughts. Absolutely. I mean, they're a hundred percent. I mean, it's that whole, you know, circumstances, thoughts, feelings, Mm -hmm. results, actions, you know, um, or it's actions, yeah. results, I guess. And so <laughs> it matters so much. And I think that, I mean, really understanding that you control your thoughts and thus you control all your feelings to mm. me is like the most empowering thing on the whole planet, because then I, I'm never giving away my feelings to somebody else, you know, mm-hmm. because I realize that I'm in 100% control of all my feelings all the time mm-hmm. through my thoughts. And yeah. so I find that to be very powerful and to help children understand that. I mean, that's kind of game changing. If kids exactly. can understand that they don't have to be pulled around by random mm. emotions. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, completely. And this is why, this is why we teach uh, things like mindfulness and meditation yeah. and visualization and, and, you know, habit building. Cause if, if, if they're getting that information at a young age, they're not yeah. going to allow previous conditioning of, you know, either their parents, their family, whoever it is, like we all have conditioning. And yeah. I think we all work at breaking the conditioning that maybe isn't supporting us. And one mm-hmm. of those things is, is how we choose to 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 look at our thoughts look at our actions um and allow ourselves to understand uh our mental process i mean if there's one thing in life that i i fully stand by is the fact that we need to we need to work on building our relationship with our mind because our mind's always going to be there (laughs) totally oh my gosh i'm gonna have to find my sign for you okay wait here it is i'm gonna find my sign You'll have to excuse that it's not necessarily the nicest thing. Ah, <laughs> I love that. I do too. And I usually have it out, but I took it down so people didn't see it because, you know, sometimes <laughs> I might get offended. But oh my gosh, absolutely. We have to be able to control our minds. I think that's mm-hmm. critical because, yeah. and, and our minds don't always tell us the truth you know, yeah. like, uh, no. you know, in that mean girl, I mean, I call mine Eloise when she's talking smack to me, I have to like, <laughs> ask, I'm like, wait a minute. Was that actually true? You know, mm. and I mean, if it is true. I need to, you know, own it and do what I can to make improvements. But I mean, a good 50% of the time, Eloise is telling me stuff that is not true. And I'm like, mm. okay, girl, I don't know where that came from, but I mean, all that <laughs> negative self-talk we do. Yeah. And, just yeah I mean and that's why and that's why it's so important to to have these conversations with kids and teens yeah um I think that a lot of families tend to avoid uh these conversations and only address it when it comes up and or when it becomes too much yeah and that's the point where where I mean, you should start talking about this before that point. (laughs) I think uh, just starting from the beginning, uh, which is, I mean, exactly why we're talking to kids, you know, ages between, you know, seven and 17, because those are the ages where all of this stuff is, this is the point where 
kids are taking on information and learning and growing and absorbing everything like a sponge. And you want to make sure that the sponge is absorbing the right things and talking about money matters, talking about mindfulness, talking about, um, you know, any of the things that we've talked about just in this last, uh, however long we've been here. I just, it's all of these things that we need to allow uh, kids to absorb in a positive, healthy way so that when they do become young adults um, and, you know, continue their journey of life, they've already built in it's already been absorbed. All the good, all the goodness have been absorbed. They don't need to retrain things. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of, I feel the conversations that I have with a lot of parents is that they feel that they have to retrain themselves to not think a certain way or build a better money habit. But if you start teaching this stuff with your kid, they're not going to have to retrain. They're going to just have inbuilt healthy habits around mindfulness and money matters and so on. So totally agree. I mean, your work is so powerful. I just cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you. We are going to put in the comments and in the show notes, um, you know, resources and links where people can get to your material and the program that you're working with. I mean, I just think that the more we can do to help people have these conversations and have Mm -hmm. access to this, the resources that you have for parents and especially us busy mom, law firm owner types, I mean, being able to find your resources and get kids involved in your programming is so, so powerful. And I cannot appreciate you enough for joining me today. I know it's kind of a weird environment since it's the Maximum Mom podcast, but I think that <laughs> no, insight, yeah, and parenting is so helpful. And I really oh, appreciate you. your time today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. I know I'm not your normal guest, but I'm so glad that I, I was able to come on and, and share with you all. And, and hopefully, hopefully you got some, some value from it too. Absolutely. Well, and we're going to share all about um, the fun. How do you say it exactly? Financial? I say it, try to say the fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I say the fun. It's financial freedom, uh, where okay. instead of financial freedom, like we're, we're bringing the fun into it. So financial freedom. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate it and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.